Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about Hammer. Um, we'll, we won't be going into great detail on how to enter various properties of elements like hydropneumatic tanks. So instead, we're going to focus on two main, main things. First one being a few tips for taking an existing water model and setting it up for a transient analysis. And the second would be some key tools to help you quickly and efficiently analyze and understand your transient results and the effectiveness of different strategies. So just to cover some basics, um, some of you have already used Hammer, so you're already familiar with it. But um, just to recap here, so Hammer is our software for predicting hydraulic transients. It uses the method of characteristics, which is pretty much the industry standard, very robust, very stable. Um, the great thing about Hammer, if you're a WaterCAD or a Water Gems user and you already have a model in either of those products, you can simply open that model right up in, in Bentley Hammer. You don't have to go through any import or export procedure. You just open up the model and you have everything you need to you know, proceed with the transient simulation. And you have the same look and feel of uh, the user interface. It looks very much similar to WaterCAD or Water Gems. So that, uh, that can help you save a lot of time. So if, you're, if you've only used WaterCAD or Water Gems before and you have to do transient analysis, this is a really great tool. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do in Hammer. You can model things like pump shutdown, startup, closing valves, opening valves, uh, turbine fluctuations, um, lots of different transient protection elements that can be modeled, hydropneumatic tanks, surge tanks, air valves, um, surge relief valves, so a lot of different things that you can model there. Again, we won't go into great detail on, on all of those things in this meeting. So some basic transient theory. Um, so what is a transient? A transient is when you're transitioning from one steady state to another. So if you're starting with a pump being on and that pump is shutting off, if you run that in water gems and you look at an extended period simulation, you're just going to see, okay, the pump is on, and then the next time step, the pump is off. So those are actually two steady state conditions. So in reality, when you, ha when you have a transition between those steady state periods, there's some fluctuations that can happen, and sometimes they can be harmful. So what causes a harmful transient? Well, it's any time you have a rapid change in momentum compared to something called a characteristic time, which is equal to two times the length of your system divided by the wave speed. So it's how long a wave takes to get from one end of the system back. So things like starting up your pumps uh, too quickly, shifting their operating points, shutting them down uh, too quickly, opening and closing valves or hydrants too quickly. You know, if those things happen too fast, it can cause a transition to the new steady state that happens too quickly and can cause some pretty severe uh, changes in hydraulic grades, some severe pressures, both positive and negative. Uh, so there is a standard formula called the Joukowsky equation that you can use to kind of do a quick approximation of you know, the actual magnitude of that you know, hydraulic grade change or head change as a result of a change in momentum that's less than the characteristic time. That's really just a rule of thumb. It, it doesn't account for a lot of different complexities that Hammer can account for. So some of the risks for hydraulic transient, um, you know, obviously it can damage the pipes if it exceeds the, uh, the rating of the pipe. It can actually move structures uh, just from the forces that act upon the, uh, the pipes from a transient. You can actually you know, damage your, your pump house or you know, anchors and things like that. Uh, if you have problems with you know, low pressure surges, you can actually suck in contaminants into the seams of the pipes, and that can cause some issues there. Uh, and also, if you have air or vapor being introduced into the system as a result of a transient, that can actually cause some blockages and reduce the performance of the system. Okay, so some basic workflow for Hammer. Basically, you, you, know, you prepare your model. Usually, it's best to simplify it. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, then you enter all the transient specific properties of your elements and any configuration that's hammer specific. There's a few things we'll cover on that. Um, then you want to set up your scenarios for the various events that you may want to model uh, in hammer. Um, next step is to establish those initial conditions. So we, remember, we're starting with a, an initial steady state. We're transitioning to a new one. So uh, hammer has the ability to take advantage of the watercad slash water gems hydraulic solver to basically calculate a steady state for you uh, to establish those starting initial conditions. Then your next step is to compute a transient simulation, which takes that initial starting condition and sees what happens you know, when you transition to that new steady state, pump shutting down, valve closing, uh, so forth. 
Um, lots of tools for viewing and understanding the results, and that's a, that's a key area that we're going to touch on. Um, you know, make sure you're nice and efficient with uh, understanding those results. Um, last thing you usually want to do is a sensitivity analysis, where if you're not quite sure about a certain, you know, uh, setting of something, or if you're not sure, you know, what size of a tank or size of an air valve um, you might want to use, you can basically vary those parameters and check the transient response to that to see if it you know, has a significant uh, impact on that so you know if it's something that you need to really refine. Okay, so what do you need to do to prepare the model? So um, if you have a water cat or a water gems model, first thing is you want to make sure that it's in really good stable uh, conditions. So, you know, make sure it's calibrated, uh, you know, you don't have any issues with the model being unbalanced or, you know, any any issues like that. Hammer is a little more sensitive to those kind of things that you can you know, sometimes get away with with uh, water gems model. So you want to make sure that your initial conditions are nice and accurate. Um, then consider, you know, what kind of conditions will you be using as that starting steady state period? Will it be at a time when you're experiencing your peak hour demand, your average day? Um, should I start it with the tanks at a low level, a high level? So it's something to consider. Um, next thing you want to do is, um, if at all possible, simplify the model network. So if you have a really big model, maybe a, a city or subdivision, um, you know, one option is to just use the model as is, uh, but it's highly recommended that you skeletonize the model, which is to say, you know, simplify it down, remove uh, model elements that may not really experience bad transients and kind of focus in on the area that you, you know, expect to see the worst uh, effect of the transient. Um, but you do want to stay connected to any significant boundary conditions. So if you have a pump station that's pumping up to a tank somewhere downstream in the system, you may want to skeletonize it from the pump out to that tank. Um, another method is to basically cut off the model at a certain point and insert either a demand or a reservoir to sort of assume a, a boundary condition. We'll 